All right, so we're going to do just a sort of a quick brief tour through the different groups. That typically, these are the phyla um, of the kingdom fungi. Uh, and talk about some of the characteristics between the groups that differ, what makes kind of each one a little bit unique, uh, and then a few other characteristics of um, how fungi parasitize and or form symbiotic relationships with certain other organisms. So we'll talk about that with some of the pictures I drew over here. So first we'll look at um, ancestors of all the fungi had flagella, uh, and then they branch out into these groups. This group retains the flagella, the chytrids, um, so that's flagellated, uh, but all the rest, the zygomycota, glomeromycota, ascomycota, basidomycota, the major groups here, um, don't have uh, any flagella at any stage in their life. The chytrids do. They are then an aquatic group. Uh, they are typically um, considered pathogens and parasites uh, in many cases of both plants, insects, uh, and uh, animals, or, well, insects or animals too, the amphibians, vertebrates. And there are places, like I said, where they've uh, caused localized extinction of a number of amphibian species in particular because of the... Um, massive outbreaks uh, and the infections of them. Uh, the chytrids are the oldest then group uh, ancestrally of the, the fungi. Um, there's fossil uh, evidence of them um, back around the pre-Cambrian you know, uh, era, as you can kind of see. Um, so that's kind of the, the most closely related to the ancestor. As we branch off then, these are the more um, common groups that we tend to see uh, and know a little more about. Um, there were just really three of these groups, Zygomycota, um, Ascomycota, and Basidomycota, but the, this one here, I'll pull out the Glomeromycota, has been pulled out of the Zygomycota more, more recently. So what I'll focus on for each of these major groups um, will be uh, the spore forming structures primarily, and then a couple other maybe unique things that they do uh, when they form spores. So zygomycota are um, mostly a group that contains organisms referred to as the molds. Um, they, many of them are useful commercially, um, producing a, a number of um, biochemical products um, that we use. Uh, mostly they're um, de uh, Decompose, de dead or decaying material um, is what they're mostly doing. And their hyphae are more um, of the type of the soenacidic ones that do not have septa. They, when they reproduce, uh, what will happen here is, well, you kind of had that. I, Spell that out and, and put it into the other um, presentation. So I'm not going to leave that up here. We're just going to do this drawing instead. Um, so we have the different types of hyphae um, that will then come together and fuse And the area where the different hyphae uh, fuse together um, forms a structure called a zygosporangium. I don't know if that fits uh, in the picture there, but it's called a zygosporangium. Uh, and it has a very tough outer covering that's highly protective. Uh, and inside here is where we have the, um, then karyogamy will occur. Uh, and then these structures will uh, give rise to sporangia that will then undergo and produce the spores. And so often they then look like these little um, stalk-like structures like this that have then a little kind of spore uh, forming structure at top, which will then release the spores from it. So the zygosporangium then ends up forming this structure um, that ultimately forms the sporangia. Uh, but this is the, f the fusion between the hyphae um, that then protects the nuclei inside there. Uh, 
And so we said the, their uh, hyphae are mostly the ones without septum. The glomeromycota um, are ones that have, uh, are fairly well known as ones called arbuscular mycorrhizae. So what, uh, what is that? All right, so the mycorrhizae are these symbiotic fungi, uh, and they're incredibly important about, I think about, about 90% um, of plant species have some type of symbiotic relationship with mycorrhizal fungi, which is essentially that the, the plant roots, okay, so if we look at a plant um, going down into the soil, and this is the stem, you know, coming up here, these are the roots down here, branching out, then attached to these roots, here are little, our hyphae of different types of fungi. And so these fungi then form a symbiotic relationship. So this is a symbiosis. And that symbiosis, uh, it often results in helping pull nutrients, uh, specifically a lot of times nitrogen, out of the atmosphere. Uh, and then the association with the plant root allows the nitrogen to be put into an organic form that the plants can then use and use uh, as part of their own molecules that require nitrogen. So um, this nitrogen fixation process and the transfer of, of other sorts of nutrients and minerals between the plant and the fungi is incredibly important for a variety of many and most really species of plants. So, and uh, how this works is that I use this term arbuscular kind of means a branching structure. So what you have um, are, this is a hyphae here, produced, say, from a spore. Uh, and so what will happen is that the hyphae will then branch sometimes directly through, or in this particular case, along. And so some go intra- cellular, uh, and along means in between the cells, which is inter, that should be um, missing the R there, which is important, uh, so let me erase it, intercellular, and in between uh, the cells, going along you know the the borders between the cells um, and so hyphae are going to extend then into the plant root in between the cells of the plant some of them will go through the plants and then they'll terminate in these highly branching structures which are called arbuscular and here we're going to see a sort of a back and forth uh, transfer where there's going to be nutrients and materials given to the fungi from the plant, but in the other direction as well, from the fungi to the plant. So plant to fungi, fungi to plant, back and forth. And so that, that's typically the case with all the mycorrhizae, which are helpful and beneficial to the plants. And we find uh, some mycorrhizae in other groups as well of fungi, but the glomera mycota is mostly a group of um, mycorrhizal fungi kind of one of the things that kind of help them be identified to be pulled out as their own sort of unique group. All right, so we have the uh, zygomycota forming this unique structure called uh, zygosporangium, the glomeromycota uh, having the branching hyphae that are almost all in complete association with plant roots. Then we have now the ascomycota. Ascomycota, um, sometimes referred to as the uh, sac fungi. Uh, yeasts belong to this group. So yeasts are here, okay, um, and the yeasts are single-celled 
uh, algae, yeah, single celled algae, are single celled um, fungi um, that are that kind of unique among them, but they are also part of this Ascomycota. The Ascomycota has multicellular uh, organisms as well. They are often useful in fermentation. Uh, that produce you know, products like you know brewing uh, and baking and a variety of other processes. Uh, some bacteria are used, but a lot of fungi are used in these processes, and it's often fungi from this particular group uh, of Ascomycota. Uh, what happens here is it's kind of unique. I'll talk a little, tiny little bit about the difference that they have from the others in their reproduction. They'll have, uh, and my other lecture, I have talked about the different types of um, hyphae, like a plus and minus uh, breeding type. So here we have a negative type called conidia. And these would be, say, the positive type of hyphae. So we kind of have almost different forms within the, the Ascomycota, um, some that have the, the branching hyphae and then some that are just these small cells, uh, which are the, called the conidia. They're both 1N, you know, so both of the, the conidia are 1N, the negative type, uh, these are 1N hyphae, uh, ha all haploid, uh, a single haploid cell or the multiple uh, haploid cells. And then what we have is a fusion that will occur. So we'll get a conidia, then coming here and then fusing at the tip. So we have the plasmogamy, right? This process where the um, cytoplasm becomes one, you know, between these. And then this structure is going to form something called an ascus. And that is the structure that's then going to give rise to uh, the spore forming structure. And inside it, as it gets larger, I'll we'll use this here to maybe extend it. I'll make it a little bit bigger here. And then we'll have our ASCA spores forming inside it. And there's always going to be these eight uh, spores. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's going to be these eight ASCA spores. forming inside the structure. At the end of a hyphae, the tip of it, uh, produced by the fusion of that uh, hyphal cell and the conidia, right, which are both uh, two different breeding types, the positive and the negative. Um, the negative part being the free single-celled conidia, uh, and then the other being part of the, the hyphae. And that's the part where the ascospores will develop. And so that's called the ascomycota. Finally, then we have this, uh, and that's a pretty big group, right? There's 65,000 uh, roughly species within that group. The Basidomycota are the ones uh, known often because they're the ones that form mushrooms. Now, if you remember from the last uh, lecture I did, the mushrooms they're just the fruiting body, that's what we call them. They're the reproductive structure where the spores are going to be held. The, again, most of the organism itself uh, is a hyphae you know, underneath the soil. So we, as a, as a large branching mycelium. So we do have this mycelium, which is the organism itself. Uh, and then the mushroom that we are familiar with uh, is just the spore forming structure. Inside, they're gonna have things called um, Basidia, which are where uh, we have the little hyphae and hyphal cells, and then they will grow up like this uh, and produce these one, two, three, four, one, two, like this. They call them the um, club fungi um, because of the way that this structure looks. And so these are the structures here that will form the spores. And so when we're looking at, say, a microscope slide uh, of an example, who's a 
from the basidomycota or the ascomycota. One is you'll see the, the ascus structure, which is just this tip with these eight uh, spores in it. Or you'll see um, the basidia spores here uh, in this one larger sort of structure. It's supposed to look like a, a foot with toes is supposed to be the, the way that people often describe it is to make an analogy between something that you're familiar with. And then those are the four spores typically on the ends uh, of each of those. And the zygomycota, when you see the zygosporangium, it's usually this, it's almost, it is like sort of a spiky looking um, ball, um, which is where the fusion uh, takes place. And then the, the sporangia forms from that. So each of them has sort of a very unique looking structure. Uh, and a very important role of the basidomycota is that, is that they're um, recycling a lot of nutrients. All right, so they are, uh, again, important decomposers in forests. Breaking down often a lot of plant material that would not otherwise break down and then taking those nutrients and putting them back into the soils where they could be recycled and used by other plants uh, as they grow. And, and they are many edible versions of them as well, that people eat a lot of the different types of um, members of the basidomycota. However, some of them are also very poisonous. So um, really you need to be uh, an expert on identifying them before really trying to eat them um, because it would be very dangerous. Many uh, the mushrooms themselves look exactly the same between poisonous and non-poisonous species and you could only tell the difference by actually looking at the spore structures um, and if you don't know how to do that then you really shouldn't be eating uh, those mushrooms especially wild uh, collected ones so just kind of keep keep that in mind in addition talking about some of the organisms as they form these relationships uh, some of them in their breakdown of other material uh, form structures called hostoria. So the hostoria and the arbuscular mycorrhizae are very similar in some way. So this would be a spore structure producing the hyphae. The hostoria generally move in between the cells as opposed to through them. Okay. And then when they typically do uh, enter a cell, what mostly happens here is the hostoria are going to pull nutrients from the plant material and they're not going to put anything back in it. And ultimately, this plant cell will die. As opposed to when we're talking about the mycorrhizae, which have a symbiotic relationship, which is a very long lasting relationship uh, where they're going to constantly providing a back and forth of nutrients. The organisms that produce these uh, hostoria structures Usually it's a short lived because they're killing the organism or they're digesting the material of the organism and it's only occurring for a short amount of time. The last thing to talk about are uh, a group of organisms um, that are the result of a relationship, you know, like this. Um, they're sometimes difficult to place in terms of like where, where do they go? So they're organisms we refer to as lichens. Uh, and lichens are uh, really a, a symbiosis between fungi and an algae. So we have a, a protist and a fungi together, technically two different organisms, but in the way in which they have this tight relationship, it's like it is one organism composed of the of two different types. So we have fungal hyphae forming a sort of a net like structure that is so tightly wound that they end up looking almost like leaf like structures. And then within them, we have these single celled algae. All right, so for photosynthesis. So the fungal hyphae provide protection in an environment for the algal cells, but the algal cells that are undergoing photosynthesis and giving nutrients that are taken up by the fungi. And so it is a uh, mutualistic relationship where they're both gaining and, and benefiting from this. Uh, and one of them isn't really going to survive in this particular uh, environment without the other. So they typically live in terrestrial environments. And you could often find them growing on the bark 
of trees, on rocks, and, and a variety of different, often harder uh, surfaces, usually not on soft uh, surfaces. So they don't have roots or any branching structure that go into the soil typically. They're usually growing up onto the, the surfaces. And so there are just something that's a very unique sort of relationship between uh, two different um, phyla or just different kingdoms, you know, of, of organisms as well. So that's kind of the, the main breakdown you have uh, um, of the organization for this particular kingdom, uh, the fungi. Uh, again, one of the, the main characteristics that all the fungi are going to have is, which I hopefully I mentioned it before, but if I didn't mention it, so all the members, this is supposed to be a phyla, P-H-Y-L-A, uh, are going to have chitin, in their cell wall. Right. So the, the cell, the cells of these organisms are typically going to have cell walls. The cell walls are going to have a uh, material called chitin as part of it. And that's going to be a common thing kind of uniting the entire group. Um, they also have something called beta glycan as well, which is another sort of unique structure to them. Uh, their cell walls actually have a variety of different material. It's not 100% chitin. It's a mixture of a couple different materials, but the chitin is sort of the common one among all of them, even though they might differ slightly. Uh, so what to know about them? Just real basics of the names. Um, something unique maybe about each group, uh, partic in particular to their spore forming structures. Our lab component will have a bunch of uh, images and slides. Um, that actually show photographs of these structures. So you'll get to see them in more detail um, uh, and then be able to identify what they look like because they are um, very unique uh, and very identifiable.